Right now, Susanka Papua Sugalum is one of the great tragedies of the apartheid era. One of the most talented golfers the country has ever produced. His story is one of denied opportunities. Sugalum fought hatred with love. Tonight, we have the author, Selvan Naidu, who's written a book about Sugalum titled Out of the Rough. And we're also joined by Papua's son, Rajen. Good evening, gentlemen. Welcome to Sport on the Full View. I'm going to start with Rajen because the one way that a lot of South Africans get introduced to your father is that iconic picture of him sitting in a car outside a clubhouse eating his lunch. He's the leader of a tournament, but he's not allowed inside the clubhouse. And that's how a lot of South Africans first get introduced to one of the best golfers this country's ever produced. What do you have to say about that? And that must fill you with a a lot of pride but that in that picture it is so much sadness well you know a picture tells a story and uh, I think nobody can deny the fact that uh, my dad wasn't allowed to use the facilities that were provided for all these white counterparts uh, in 1963 in particular because that was a year that he was given an opportunity to play in an open tournament so you know, when he won internationally between 1959 and 1962, the South African government, or at least the, the, the South African PGA, still wouldn't allow him to play. And when they eventually gave him an opportunity to play in 1963, they had to make some amends uh, by allowing him, firstly, because it was causing an international embarrassment because he had already won on the international platform. But more importantly, they had to make arrangements for him. The Group Areas Act wouldn't allow for certain things. Then there was the Liquors Act that wouldn't allow him into the, uh, the clubhouse and use the facilities, uh, as uh, you know. And then also he couldn't use the change room. And coincidentally, uh, I met with a gentleman by the name of Ratif Waltman that played with my dad in 1963. And Ratif Waltman shared some stories about the tent area that was set aside for my dad in order for him to have his refreshments and change. That's incredible story. Selvin, you researched this book. You put it out there. A story that really all South Africans need to know about. How hard was it for you to piece together the history of um, this great golfer? Because um, he only came to prominence in the public eye, as uh, Rajen was saying, in 63. But he had so many tournament wins. Um, where did you find all the information? Uh, I was lucky to have worked with the uh, Sugulum family who generously ha gave me the archives to work with or their family albums. And I, and I waded through all of that. And uh, we did an exhibition in 2018 called Out of the Rough. Um, and that was on the anniversary of Papa Sugulum's 40th uh, passing uh, in 1978. So the exhibition gave birth to the idea of putting together this uh, pictorial book but the book, uh, you know, pays uh, a dedication to Rajan's mom, 92-year-old and very sprightly. Um, and it, uh, it tells her story in being a witness to her husband being tragically denied. So, you know, I dedicated to her and her, her memory. And, you know, this is one of the many, many stories that remains to be told um, in the broader South African narrative. Because we must understand that 26 years into our democracy, it's our responsibility now to claim these stories as proudly South African stories. And uh, we must be able to tell that so that new heroes and heroines uh, are actually brought to the, high, to the spotlight. And so that uh, we, we visit our South African history um, in a revisionist brushstroke, but be able to tell a people's story. And uh, this Papua Sugulum out of the rough uh, player denies is one such story that tells this uh, people's journey. And it's a story that a lot of South Africans, non-white South Africans, can identify with because they were living in a world that didn't want them. And you, Rajan, your father was excelling in a world that didn't want him. How did he get onto golf courses to play? How did he play the game he loved? What was his way in? Because the golf, golf clubs are pretty foreboding places. They were back then. They still are to this day. If you're not a member, you're not really that welcome there. Um, how did he go about pursuing his passion? Well, you know, uh, my dad was a caddy. 
And, you know, he learned his prowess around the golf course from being a caddy and for caddying for his white counterparts. Having said that, um, you know, it was in 59 that a gentleman by the name of Graham Wolf took my dad on a mini European tour to play in the Dutch Open, the German Open, and, and the French Open, and the British Open. So that is where he excelled. And uh, when he won the Dutch Open in 1959, that was the first out of three in a period of six years. So that put him on, immediately onto an international platform. And for anybody, for anybody that um, uh, looks at the Dutch Open trophy itself, they will see names like Bernard Langer, Severiano Ballastoris, and so on etched on that trophy. And having won the tournament and coming back to South Africa, um, it embarrassed the, the South African PGA, and more importantly, it was the British PGA that allowed my dad to play uh, overseas before South Africa could accept him as, as a player. And Sylvan, I mean, golf is a, is a game where uh, your people speak a lot in the clubhouse and they remember fondly and they have their heroes of the time. And do you get the impression that Papua has spoken about in clubhouses? He had a very unique um, style of holding the club. Uh, he contributed volumes to the game in South Africa. Do you feel like he has his place, or is this something that needs to be done, that he needs to get his place in the game locally? I, I don't you think know, his story I, I think is told it, it, as... It, Sorry, yeah, no, so I'll, I'll take Selvin uh, first. Okay, no, I, I don't think his story is told as readily as we want it to be told, uh, because, you know, much of the older generation is very aware of the story and this tragic uh, story of denial at the height of apartheid. So, you know, it falls to us to be able to tell the story. And, and you know, we must claim it as a plow proudly South African story, because as Rajan had mentioned, you know, Graham Wolf uh, discovered his talent. And what, what knows what would have happened, you know, if... Papo would have, would have been discovered much earlier. He was discovered at 31 years old. So, you know, this is a story of great hope and potential where we as South Africans could use this to, to inspire us to pull out more Papuas from the townships um, and, you know, develop our own very Tiger Woods. And, you know, that's, that's the great potential with this particular story. You know, we, we're grateful that um, we've had uh, sponsors like Sibaya, Mount Etchcombe Country Club and Durban Country Club previously, you know, come on board. So, you know, it lies, uh, the, this responsibility falls to the corporate world, falls to government, falls to us as, you know, amateur golfers uh, to be able to tell the story of not just Papua Siogulam or people like Vincent Shabalala, Richard uh, Mokwarayani, um, Simon Cox and Schlapo. You know, these are the great names that we ought to be telling in the, in the broad uh, South African history so that our children remember these names and be, and be able to take these names and allow themselves to be inspired to grow to greater heights and so that, you know, hopefully we, we're able to produce that Tiger Woods that all of us once in South Africa. Absolutely, and that's what golf in this country has been speaking about for years, is the development of golf. But now, Rajen, your father's hard work, the hard yards that he put in, it, does that mean a child from Phoenix, from Chatsworth, can go to the Mount Edgecombe Golf Club, can go to the Durban Country Club and, you know, discover their passion? Are they welcome? Do you feel that way? It, it, there's a lot that needs to be done. And, you know, I just want to build on what Selden said just now. That, you know, at the height of apartheid, we produce far more playing professionals than we do now. And that is questionable. Because in, in, you know, in, in the years that my dad won internationally, there hasn't been a single person of color that has won in international tournaments subsequent to that. So it says a lot about, firstly, to answer your question, yes, the accessibility is there. I think a lot needs to be done in terms of the affordability. A lot of the, um, the up-and-coming players find it quite difficult because it is quite costly to become a member of some of these clubs that you've mentioned. And, you know, unless you play on championship golf courses, only then are you able to produce a champion.
Absolutely. And Salvin, uh, you, you speak about that as well. Um, do you feel like South African golf is doing enough? Uh, because they do pay lip service. I'm being quite cynical when I say lip service, because it's a theme that happens at all the big tournaments. Um, that they say, this, is, this much is going into development. But when is the next um, generation of South African golfers coming through? Um, do you see that happening, Salvin? Look, I think we, we, it's very problematized. I think uh, transformation is not happening as, uh, as fast as we want it to happen. You know, while we're proud of the Brandon Stones, the Dylan Fratellis, and so on, I think we also want to see you know, more and more black golfers coming to the fore. And, um, you know, it's not happening. But I think, you know, there's, as I said, you know, the responsibility falls to us. I think government needs to uh, intervene, and so does the corporate world. You know, golf's an expensive, elitist game. You know, on average, it costs you 500 rand to play on quality golf courses. So, you know, we've got to own this, and it uh, doesn't necessarily have to be a tick box exercise in ensuring that transformation is happening. And transformation needs to be real because, you know, the last golfer to win internationally was uh, Vincent Chabalala, black golfer, in 1976. And Papo was the last great golfer to actually finish 13th in the British Open of 1963. So, you know, that tells volumes in terms of where we are. And uh, there's so few black uh, professional golfers making it out, even in the South African uh, tour. You know, golf's a hard game. It requires a lot of dedication and effort. You've got to put in the yards. But uh, equally, we need um, government support. We need corporate support. We need individuals to come on board and see those kids from Kwamashu, Amlazi, Phoenix, Chatsworth, and so on uh, come to the fore so that, uh, you know, we develop. And, and equally, we need to see transformation in the schools. You know, uh, we can't just see it happening in the uh, old uh, ex-Model C schools. We want to see it in schools, in the townships, and so on. So maybe a little bit more investment and time in terms of developing super schools out in the townships. Um, and, you know, genuine schools where there's a lot of effort and so that those boys and girls are participating in, uh, against as equals, you know, against the sort of uh, Cliftons and the um, Kersneys and the Northwoods and the Glenwoods and so on, so on, so that, you know, we could have a real, real transformation and, and it's not just lip service. So there's a lot of effort and time that needs to be put into these things um, and not just, uh, you know, as uh, a way of uh, tick box. We need to make sure these things are real and uh, we start seeing progress. And so a lot of that, that falls to us uh, in the years ahead. And uh, access is one of it. I think, uh, you know, it's uh, ridiculous that 26 years into a democracy that not a lot of time and effort has gone into the municipal golf courses. Because I think if we develop and put a lot of effort into bringing some parity in terms of quality to the municipal courses, it will encourage, um, you know, golfers that aren't able to afford uh, golf on quality courses. And if those municipal courses are actually developed to the level and quality of you know, your private courses, then at least we'd be, make this game a lot more accessible and at least be able to get more and more black youngsters. Um, and, 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 and in this instance, it's a matter of class. So I think if we're able Absolutely. to get people to the uh, uh, courses, it'll be brilliant. Selvan so Rajan, we're out of time, but so we're talking about accessibility uh, and also about getting the story out there. This book, um, Out of the Rough, about Papua, Selgulum, South Africans need to know about it. Um, incredible story. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, we're out of time for this segment of your sport on the full view. Your weather's up next.